Hello everyone, this is Nitpicking Nerd, also known as Major Green, and today I want to review the movie Fortress 1992, which I just watched uh, for the first time, and this is one of those uh, 90s movies which uh, I totally missed, which I always love to find these older movies, uh, which are of the same type of the movies that I used to love as a kid, and so it's almost nostalgic for me to watch such movies, even if I'd never saw them uh, before, uh, because they have that same kind of uh, style, that same kind of charm, as those movies that I used to love as a kid. And somehow I totally missed this one. I only found it uh, because I recently watched the movie From Beyond and absolutely loved it. And so I checked out to see what other movies the same director made. And he made the Reanimator and he also made the, this movie. So this is kind of a 90s action movie and also a science fiction movie and also a prison movie. Uh, all of the above I love. I love the 90s uh, action movies. I love science fiction movies and I love prison movies. And so this movie had it all. Now, uh, I'm not saying this is a perfect movie. It, uh, it's kind of cheap in a lot of places. Some of the special effects are kind of laughable, but it's kind of like a B-movie, which uh, I love. Like, I love uh, those bad movies, which are so bad, they are good. And so even those parts which were ridiculous or very stupid, or in which the special effects were uh, very obvious, it's still uh, funny. In a way, it's even more fun this way because it's, it makes it like a half comedy. And I explained this before, I explained why I love movies like this, especially when I talked about the movie From Beyond, I explained why I love those types of movies, even if they have a lot of bad or stupid uh, stuff in them. So this is the same type of movie. And now the plot is actually pretty interesting as a science fiction plot. It's kind of a dystopian future in which uh, humanity I guess because of overpopulation, it's illegal for a woman to have uh, more than one child. And if a woman becomes pregnant a second time, they basically send her to prison. Abortion is also illegal apparently, so they just take their babies, and put the woman in prison uh, for uh, decades, and the prisoners are treated in a very fascistic kind of way, you know, the slightest violation and they basically execute you. All the prisoners are implanted with a bomb inside their stomach, and so if they cross the, the line, and go somewhere they're not supposed to, they simply blow up and also the prison guards can punish them by inflicting pain uh, using this implant to keep them obedient. Also, uh, most of this prison is run by kind of uh, artificial intelligence, so there's also that element uh, of uh, artificial intelligence basically ruling uh, over people. And there is an evil warden who is played by uh, the guy who always plays villains. He was the villain in Robocop, he was also a villain in Star Trek. So I always see him as that type of villain and here he's kind of like the sympathetic villain, like he's a villain but uh, he has like a nice side to him. It kind of reminded me of Dukat in Deep Space Nine who was kind of uh, an evil but with a soft uh, side to him and he was kind of lonely and he wanted a comfort woman with him. So he picked from his Bajoran prisoners uh, a woman to serve him company and stuff like that. So we have the same kind of stuff here and of course this is before uh, Deep Space Nine. Also, this movie reminds me of Shawshank Redemption, which, uh, by the way, I think is one of the best movies uh, ever. And so this one was very similar in many ways, but uh, with a science fiction twist and with an action hero twist and all kinds of schlocky stuff. So this movie is kind of similar to that. It's kind of a Shawshank Redemption, but in a science fiction setting and with a 90s action movie. But it had a lot of similar elements. Uh, for example, the evil warden, of course. Uh, also the prison bully slash rapist, uh, who by the way when I saw him in the movie he looked very familiar to me but I couldn't place him. Uh, so I had to look him up and actually he played a bunch of uh, villain roles in all kinds of 90s uh, action movies which I saw. And I think he's a pretty good actor because uh, he plays it so differently in uh, every movie he appeared in that you don't even realize he's the same guy. So I think it's a sign of a good actor. And so anyway he was the prison bully in this uh, story. And the main hero is played by uh, Christopher uh, Lambert, who is most famous for his role in uh, Highlander. And also Jeffrey Combs plays one of the prisoners. He's like a geeky, crazy genius. And uh, that kind of reminds me of uh, Brent Spiner's role in uh, Independence Day. He was kind of like a brilliant professor, but also kind of crazy, geeky, kind of hippie who behaves kind of like a former Jiragi or something. So a very funny kind of character. So Jeffrey Combs plays brilliantly in this. I think it's one of the, his best roles. He doesn't have a lot of screen time, but he's uh, very funny in this movie. I love the, his part. And also there's a black guy who is kind of like Morgan Freeman. So when I saw that, I almost laughed. Uh, I thought this movie is kind of ripping off Shawshank Redemption. Now that I looked it up, actually this movie came out uh, two years before Shawshank Redemption. 
I guess maybe it could have ripped off the original uh, book which uh, that movie was based on uh, but uh, Morgan Freeman's character in the book was not even black and so you, I, we cannot say this movie ripped off Shawshank Redemption so maybe Shawshank Redemption ripped off this movie because we had the same kind of uh, Morgan Freeman type of prisoner who is like the best friend of uh, the Highlander uh, who is like Andy in uh, Shawshank Redemption so anyway, maybe other movies actually ripped off this movie, even though it's kind of a B-movie. So this reminds me of what I said uh, when I reviewed From Beyond, that it's, uh, it felt like a prototype to a lot of ideas which I saw in other movies later, which came out later. And so I feel the same thing about this movie. It has a lot of uh, all kinds of elements which I recognize from older movies and older TV shows which came out after. And so maybe they took inspiration from this movie actually, or maybe it's just something that kind of existed maybe in older movies as well, kind of the same type of ideas, uh, you know, like the evil warden and uh, early on in the movie when he first enters uh, the prison, immediately we saw a prisoner being executed. So that also reminds me of Shawshank Redemption in which uh, there was this uh, fat guy who gets killed off in his first day in prison. So we had the same exact uh, thing in this movie. So maybe the writer of this movie kind of ripped off uh, various books or something because there's a lot of elements like that which I kind of recognize from uh, a lot of places. And it kind of makes this movie kind of schlocky, it's kind of laughable, it's very predictable. You know exactly what's going to happen because you've seen it a million times in other places. But it's part of the fun in my opinion. Like it's predictable but that makes it even funnier. So this is kind of unintentional uh, comedy, uh, B-movie, uh, 90s uh, action movie, and the science fiction part is also very entertaining. A lot of neat ideas, by the way. Actually, I think uh, if someone takes the story of this movie and makes a modern, serious science fiction movie, it might actually be very good because there were a lot of very neat ideas in this one. The execution of them is not so neat, but that makes it even more fun in a weird kind of way. Uh, even the special effects, for example, there's a scene in which uh, someone's uh, belly gets uh, blown off and you see a giant hole in his belly, like he's missing his entire uh, midsection and yet somehow he remains standing up for a few seconds, which is not very possible because, you know, if you don't have a spine inside there, how exactly are you still standing? Like it takes him uh, like half a minute before he falls down dead. So that's kind of a laughable special effects, but uh, in some ways it's kind of brilliant, like it looks very good. In other ways it's ridiculous because it's not realistic. So something about this combination makes it very entertaining in my opinion. This is like 90s uh, horror, uh, science fiction, gory kind of scene and so I love it. And I don't want to spoil too much of this movie, but there's also uh, the idea of uh, cybernetic humans later on in the movie. Some characters turned out to be cyborgs. And then we have basically Borg soldiers uh, showing up, people who are modified uh, to be half machines and they look exactly like the Borg. Okay, spoiler warning, I'll go into the details. Basically, that's what they do with the babies, which I mentioned before, that uh, it's not allowed to have more than one child in this future. And so those women who get pregnant a second time, they are taken to this prison and then their babies are taken away from them and are used for experiments and they're basically turned into these kinds of cyborgs uh, to be used as soldiers and all that stuff. So a lot of kind of neat ideas in this movie, which could have been a great movie with a bigger uh, budget, I think, with today's special effect. It might actually be a pretty uh, nice uh, science fiction horror action movie, I think and even uh, drama and all of that. So it could be a great serious movie, but uh, in this version, it's obviously very schlocky, very silly, very stupid. Sometimes a lot of scenes are totally stupid, totally ridiculous, but they're still fun in that kind of way. And we have a lot of uh, neat science fiction uh, ideas, which uh, I did see in all kinds of other movies. For example, everyone has uh, the barcode tattoo. I think we saw that in Terminator, that everyone in the future, the machines basically labeled them, kind of like the Nazis did in the concentration camp. So the machines in the future, the Skynet in Terminator, they did that uh, to humans, but with a barcode. And so we have the exact same thing in this movie. Everyone has uh, barcodes and then they get uh, bombs implanted into them which by the way was an idea I think in uh, The Running Man. We also saw a prison in which they simply blow you up if you do something, if you try to escape. And so I guess uh, a lot of these ideas were ideas that are common in science fiction and in uh, other movies. Uh, but uh, this movie had so many such ideas that it was really fun. Like it's not boring for one second uh, in this movie because they keep uh, showing you all kinds of ideas like that. Also they have uh, like dream uh, control in this uh, prison. Basically, whenever a prisoner has any kind of fun uh, dream, any kind of sexual dream, 
then they basically wake him up with uh, pain and they don't allow people to have uh, fun uh, dreams in this prison basically and they also do kind of experiments on people kind of mind control experiments trying to brainwash people so there's that element as well so i think there's so many good ideas in this movie all in one and also some neat special effects uh, action scenes all of it with practical special effects uh, all the gory makeup gory props puppets uh, all that kind of stuff no cgi at all I also love the science fiction settings of this uh, prison. Basically, it's all underground. Uh, they show us it's like a giant hole in the ground, uh, which also kind of reminds me of uh, the pit in uh, The Dark Knight Rises. We had that uh, story of Bruce Wayne having to climb out of the prison and then uh, everybody cheering and stuff like that. We had very similar stuff in this movie as well. So basically, it's a giant hole in the ground and uh, with a lot of levels underground. Uh, all of it is the prison and it's run by an uh, artificial intelligence uh, computer and by the evil uh, warden, of course, who is kind of lonely and he's looking for a comfort woman and he picks uh, the wife of uh, Highlander. And then uh, she's a computer expert and so she can break into the prison and help uh, Highlander escape. And the Morgan Freeman type of character also helps out in the end. And also he's the personal manservant of the warden. Uh, which also kind of reminds me of a lot of uh, different stuff like we even see a scene of him shaving the warden and uh, he's basically like a, a disciplined slave he's a slave which was so conditioned that he's totally loyal to his master and uh, he keeps waiting for a parole just like morgan freeman in uh, shoshank redemption as i said so he hopes to get a parole and so he won't do anything against his master in the beginning until he realizes it's all a charade he'll never will get his parole and also that scene of him shaving that also that's something that was uh, done in a lot of uh, shows and movies with uh, the main villain letting someone shave him uh, but that someone is so terrified of them that they will never think about just killing them with a the knife i think we had a scene like that in game of thrones even uh, with uh, ramsey letting uh, Theon who is kind of like his slave at that point uh, to shave him and uh, Theon will not even think about harming him despite all he did to him and stuff like that so that's again in kind of uh, the same type of scene which I saw in a lot of other places and as I said this whole science fiction setting of this uh, futuristic prison I thought was really well done in this movie when we see the prison from inside it looks kind of like uh, that alien building in a forbidden planet which is like a giant structure from inside uh, which looked really cool and so we have the same kind of shots uh, in the inside of this prison and also they use the prisoners for slave labor to basically dig more levels under the prison basically they keep digging to add more and more uh, levels to it and then we have all those uh, cybernetic uh, basically Borg uh, soldiers in the end and stuff like that crazy stuff so I very much enjoyed this movie this is one of those uh, classic uh, B movies which I totally missed before and uh, there's a sequel of this movie which totally sucks it's a very bad and cheap looking movie the same exact plot again basically but nothing uh, not, none of the cool moments none of the funny moments it's just totally boring it looks much worse, uh, terrible special effects, it's all now in space, the prison is now in space, so you would think it's more epic, but it looks so much cheaper that it's really no fun at all, so do not waste time on the sequel, the original however is a very good movie in my opinion. Well, not a very good movie, but a very entertaining movie, at least for a one-time viewing, it's kind of a, a good popcorn uh, flick. So this is my review, let me know what you think in the comments below, please subscribe, please like, check out my other videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.